Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ace of Attorney Investigations to Prosecutor's Gambit, where we're about to begin our investigation on this old case. I know there's usually a flashback. This is this is pretty neat, getting to play as Edgeworth's dad. I see gloves. Gloves. Tengara was more than when he was working on his masterpiece over there. They're conveniently good at hiding fingerprints, too. I suppose it's possible to employ them in such a manner. But is it really all that suspicious to find a pair of gloves in a kitchen like this? I'm a detective. Everything's suspicious. That's a job. Fair point. Oh, oh what's this? Oh, that look. Okay, I see it now. I thought it was something broken. There's some very tasteful tableware here, along with some kitchen utensils. This tea set is of the same design as the one Miss Bound served us with earlier. <coughs> oh, sorry. You think Samson could have been drinking tea out of that? Pot and cup were dusted for prints. His were the only ones found. And was that the case for the utensils too? And everything else had been washed, so there weren't any prints to find. Mr. Tangaroa was wearing gloves while he was working on his confectionaries. That could explain why prints were only found on the teapot and the cup. Yep. A Paulic piece, Tangaroa's fingerprints on it. Nothing there. Oh, it's back in the fridge. A well-equipped kitchen, as one might expect. Sadly, it doesn't look like there's much to be found in the way of clues. Nothing interesting in the fridge, either. We checked. Uh, I did get myself a snack, though. Who are you? And you are? Hmm. Sorry. Meditating. Did you want something, detective? Oh, I'm an attorney, not a detective. Uh, Gregory Edgeworth. A pleasure to meet you. And I'm his assistant, Eddie Fender. Hmm, I see. His name's Carmelo Gusto. I'm a confectioner here for the contest. You are? What's your specialty, Mr. Gusto? What? The art of air and sugar. No way! Look at that! It's a little baby seahorse! It's a dragon, a noble soaring creature of the skies. That's a dragon? I mean, I see it. Uh, my first thought was seahorse as well. It does look more aquatic than airborne. No need to sugarcoat it. My design sense is weak. I know that better than anybody. That's why I'm heading to Jingfa when this is all over. I need to train. Hard. Perhaps we should get off the subject of his design sense for now. So what are you doing here, Mr. Gusto? I didn't think they were allowing civilians in on the scene yet. Detective wanted to know more about one of the pieces in here. Makes sense, seeing as he's a contestant. Perhaps I should ask him a few questions of my own. <laughs> Man, I was doing good. Felt felt clear. Now I'm a. Now the coughing's back. Uh, all right. I guess. Uh, tell me about yourself. Those are some interesting implements you use, Mr. Gusto. Alright, that's pretty good. Sugar blowing plumps. They put air into the sugar. Please tell me that's supposed to be a chicken and not a dragon. They're so cool! It's like watching a swordmaster do his thing! Master, not day goes by, I don't hurt myself one way or another. And that's why I wear red. That way it doesn't matter when I make a mess. The way of the confectioner is a lonely one. You never stop learning, not until you die. The way of the confectioner sounds like a long one, too, if he's still injuring himself on a daily basis. So, uh, yeah, and you don't you don't really hear about uh, injuries too often when it comes to baking. All right, yeah, tell us about the contest. What can you tell us about the contest? Based on what we've seen so far, flavor doesn't seem to be the only criteria at play. Contest was Tangara's idea. It's about art. Confectionery as art. Well, that would explain all the little neat things. Confectionery as art. Art you can eat. Every part of it. Every single item in this room is edible. Uh, the whole place does kind of smell like chocolate. 
Dagor is a genius, a once in a generation talent. Flavor and flair, he has it all. And if you can't outdo the god of confections himself, you can't win. I don't know, man. Beating out the greatest in the world seems kind of hard, yeah? As it should be, whoever beats him becomes the greatest in turn. That's the real prize here. Nothing else matters. So you're competing for a title, effectively. And a treasure, the ultimate cookbook. Tangaroa's most prized possession. If you want to know more? It's all written down here. Ooh, I'll take that. It's a list of rules that was given out to the contestants. A piece of paper listing the rules for the contest. I'd like to look at that, actually. Uh, wrong button. There we go. Prizes. The ultimate cookbook, title of World's Greatest Confectioner. Makes sense. Judging will proceed clockwise from the leftmost room. All contestants to gather in Mr. Tangaroa's room when judging ends. Non-confectionary items may not be used as decoration. Okay. Stands and display materials will be provided. Contestants may not enter another contestant's room until judging has been complete. Interesting. Okay. I don't know why I've zoomed in on rule two. Alright, anyway. Tell me about the incident, I guess. Sorry, I don't know much about what happened. I only heard about it after the judging was over. How was the judging organized? It started at uh, 3 p.m. Tangaroa began making the rounds right around then. He left his own room, then worked his way around the venue clockwise, as it said in the rules. My creations were the first to be judged. After that, he went to Scone's room. She's another of the contestants. What can you tell us about her? Ruthless, brutal. There's nothing she wouldn't do to win. She was working with Cream, some kind of dreamscape. And then last of all, Frost's room. This thing was flavored ice. Sculptures this time, or so I heard. Bound found the body while Tangara was still making the rounds. She panicked, ran to call the cops. Tangara went right on judge and claims he didn't know a thing about it until afterward. Went ahead and looked over the victim's work, even though the guy was nowhere to be seen. Hm. Pretty suspicious behavior in anyone's book. Nope. I don't have enough information to challenge him on that yet. Nope, we do. By the way, Detective Bad, what were you and Mr. Gusto talking about earlier? I was going to ask about the piece on the wall here, the one in the frame. Seemed like something was off. Thought I'd better ask somebody who knows about this stuff. Then you bozo showed up and pulled me away from my very important work. Perhaps we can take a closer look at it together. I'll take a hint, can you? Mr. Gusto, would you mind helping us out? Of course. The confectionery is... Confectionery is... Keep slipping into bad. <laughs> Confectionery is my life's. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Okay. Uh, tell me about this. Knew you could make a picture this pretty out of chocolate. Samson really is a god among men. Is it really made of chocolate, though? It looks far too much like regular illustration to me. You have a good eye. I'm impressed. That's no piece of candy, that's the ultimate cookbook. The ultimate cookbook, in other words, the grand prize. What? So it's not made of chocolate after all? No, the book is simply framed in some. Makes sense. Tangara showed it to all of us when he gathered us here to explain the rules. So the participants knew that the grand prize was in this room the whole time. Anyway, you see it too, right? The frame. Something's missing. Oh yeah, I see it. At first, I was like, did someone take a bite out of the frame? Also, I see a handprint. Ah, the oddity Detective Bad was going to ask Mr. Gusto about earlier. Yes. You're right, Detective. Something is missing from this frame. So it's not just me. Ah, what's missing? I'd better show Eddie which part of the frame is missing some chocolate. Take that. 
Look at the decorative work in the corner here. Something's missing, no? No, oh, yeah, it's different from the other side. Mm, it's not like anger. The balance is all wrong. Who? That time I just picked the wrong character. But that's not all. Take a look around. Every confection in this room is missing some small bit. Interesting. You're right, the candle holder, the nautical stuff, they're all like that. Did somebody deliberately damage them? That's a very good question. Or did Tangara just want it to look like somebody messed with his work? He'd never do that to his own creations, never! Could this have some deeper meaning for the case? I'm gonna scar the scene and inspect anything that catches my attention. Okay. Candelabra. Red chocolate. There's a title here. The Light of Life. Well, this particular light seems to be missing one of its life-giving flames. Does it have some sort of symbolic meaning? Could it be? No. Okay. The journal belonging to the captain of the chocolate ship. It also made of chocolate. A Diary of Despair. That's some title. Come, hearken, see how we crossed the sea and rode the red tide to misery. What a jaunty rhyme for such a tragic sounding tale. Oh, maybe we got that. Uh, what are you? Oh, looks like a fire alarm. Yeah, and before you start prodding it, it's not made of chocolate. <laughs> Push it and bells will start ringing. People will come running from the security room. A whole bunch of assholes who so don't. I know you want to, but don't. Honestly, the thought hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> Typical attorney. What does being an attorney have to do with anything? Uh, oh. The picture's not made of chocolate, it's the cover of the book. The ultimate cookbook. The ultimate cookbook, in other words, the grand prize. Yes, and framed in chocolate. Tengaro showed it to all of us when he gathered us here to explain the rules. So there's a yeah, prize was in the room the whole time. Yeah, we... I swear we went over that. Can I look at this? Are those fingerprints? Yeah, but we don't know who's yet. Still haven't figured it out. No fingerprints, no ID. Finger marks without prints. They could certainly be important to the case. Yeah. Hmm, this is a real head scratcher, all right. Not really, I'm guessing whoever it was wore gloves. Ah, uh, where's your sense of romance, of adventure? It doesn't tend to be much of either at a crime scene, Eddie. Ah, 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 shoot! You alright, Eddie? Uh, yeah, but it sure is chilly in here. Yes, it wasn't exactly warm out in the fountain room either. It's even colder in here. Would you like to borrow my jacket? Uh, no, I, I, I'm fine. Besides, you said you'd give it to me when I finally got my attorney's badge. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Why do I have the heat down so low? Chocolate needs to be kept at the right temperature. Take a look behind the panel on the wall. What panel? Look at that! It was here the whole time! There's one in each of the con contest rooms. Tengaroa hid them so they wouldn't spoil the aesthetic of our works. And what do the controls do? They adjust the temperature and the lighting. Goes all the way down to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold enough to keep any confectionery from melting. So in effect, each room is a giant freezer. Makes sense. It's 59 degrees in here, no wonder I'm cold. Hey, Detective Bad, you uh, mind if we turn it up a little? Uh. Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation to de of detective work. But, but I'm not a detective! Same goes for attorneys, Eddie. We must never disturb the scene of a crime. Hmm. Get used to the cold. It's all part of your training. Chocolate needs to be kept between 59 and 65 degrees. There's no way around it. Ooh, can I get that in writing? Hmm. You know the temperatures by heart, huh? I guess it is your job. It's the very least I should know. Any real confectioner should be able to tell you that and more. Alright, what about lollipops and cream? If it's not too hot or too humid, a lollipop should be fine just about anywhere. Creams need to be kept at around 50 degrees. 
Need to watch out for heat and humidity, huh? Duly noted. Uh, Detective Bad kind of brightened up when he was talking about lollipops, didn't he? I suppose he must be very fond of them. I don't believe there's any more to be found here. Okay. Uh, what are you? This is a fine selection of nautical paraphernalia. You think one of them could be the murder weapon? No, they're all made out of chocolate. You'd have a hard time bludgeoning somebody to death with one of them. <laughs> Can't tell what's real in here. They really do look genuine. I can hardly tell the difference myself. A true testament to Mr. Tangaroa's skills. Oh. You there. How's it looking over here, officer? Nothing of interest in that cupboard, or... Uh, yes, sir. So there is... Oh, uh, no, there isn't. Just blowtorch used for cooking and some tableware, sir. You're the man, Mr. Turney. Nothing to add, am I right? No. So, do you have something to add? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Can't get a straight answer out of anybody. Perhaps you should ask a straight question. <laughs> uh, what about you? What are you investigating, officer? Sir, I was just taking the temperature of the water here. What have you learned? Oh, uh, it's warm, sir. The stream in each room flows into the main fountain, and then the water is circulated back into the rooms. Unusual to say the least, I've never seen a house quite like this one. Mm, rich folks, they're all crazy. Uh, Alright, that apparently we've already looked at- Oh, what's this? The Red Rover and the Crimson Tide. It looks like this title is the inspiration for everything on display here in this room. The ship and the treasure chest, of course, but also all the other nautical objects on display. It's certainly a suitable grand theme with which to showcase Mr. Tangaroa's talents. Ooh, here we go. So this is where the body was discovered. Yeah, they took it away already, but everything else is just how we found it. Alright, it appears the body was inside the treasure chest. Yeah, a woman by the name of Bound found it. Uh, Samson, are you in here? Ah! Seems you heard something breaking and came in to see what it was. So we have to figure out what that sound was. Or what caused the ship to break. If only we had just a little more information. Hmm, there's something else in here. Huh, it's... It looks like a seal of some kind with somebody's initials and an intricate shape carved into it. <clears throat> Is that for making those faxy, fancy wax things on documents? You think it belonged to the victim? No idea, but it's got, got to get logged anyway, so I'll take that. Well, I'm already noticing the, the HQ initials. Interesting. Seal is found near the body when it was discovered. What could the design signify? Uh, what's the what's the guy's name? Uh. Oh wait, never mind. No, I'm right. Paul Paul Henrique, because it's backwards. Oh my god, nailed it already. I don't know if that's supposed to be hard to figure out, but we got it. That that is gonna be big later. I wonder, it's probably too early to put that together, isn't it? Is that going to be the thing, this case, where everyone looks at it and says it's HQ because it's backwards, but when you stamp it down, it's Paul Henrique. Or Paul Hulik. I think Paul Henrique is a hockey... No, that's Adam Henrique? I'll, I'll get it. It's really rather impressive making an entire ship out of chocolate. That's us some Tangaroa for ya. Don't you just want to take a big bite out of it? Uh, which part to bite first, though? That's the real head scratcher, you know? Bite any part of it, kid, and you'll be off this crime scene so fast your head will spin. Hey, it was just a joke. Stop staring at me like that. You sometimes wish Eddie could keep his cool a little better. Uh, oh, wait, did I... thought I saw something here... there... no. Uh... I 
I didn't say we were done. Ah, there we go. One of the stands for the ship is broke. Oh, there we go. The ship collapsed because one of its stands broke. Okay. The ship must have collapsed onto the treasure chest and smashed it open. So wait, do, do you think... Could that be how the victim died? He Was he crushed by the ship? Uh... I don't think so. It's made of chocolate. If he was, this becomes an accidental death and not a murder. You too serious. Don't worry, detective. For the moment, we're simply discussing a possibility. I was being serious, though. Detective, can you tell us a little more about the state of the victim's body? Let me see. Got a picture here someplace. You can see for yourself. That was from Blood Force Trauma. Got that. And what about the weapon? Has it been found yet? You can ask the prosecutor in charge about that. Detective's not one for sharing much, I see. Would you mind if we borrowed this? Let's get off my nose. It's not like it's official. Pound took it with an instant camera when she found the body. What's well, convenient? An instant camera? Like it's disposable or something? No, it means that it develops the pictures right there and then when you take them. No way! Sounds pretty convenient. Now well, then, I'd better get my facts straight and take down some notes of my own. Hmm, there's something in this picture that contradicts with the current crime scene. I'll need to call on my powers of deduction to figure out why. Crime scene notes. Notes about this crime scene. The police have taken custody of the body. Alright, we will go ahead and call it an episode here. We will figure out what is different about the crime scene in the next episode. I hope you're enjoying this. I think this is a really neat case so far. Uh, again, I really like all the characters that they've introduced. So, we shall see how this goes. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.